Don't know your magnums from your shaders? Don't understand textures and tapers and feeling lost with needles and knowing it's affecting your PMU work? Well, this video will change that. You're about to learn it all. Knowing all about your permanent makeup needles is going to give you the confidence to choose the correct needle for each client and situation. When I learned years ago, I learned a 1RL and that was it. And that's not suitable for most clients. Is that you too? And now you're searching for the best needle? There is no best needle, not for brows, not for lips. You're an artist and you have all this wide range of tools to choose from for all sorts of different results. Once you understand that, you'll open the door to so much more choice and creativity as well as safety. I'm gonna split this video into nine sections and chapter them for easy reference. So let's get the worst needles out of the way. Are there any of those? Sure, bad quality needles, cheap needles from dodgy sites that may not really be sterilized, and they'll probably tear your client's skin to bits. Avoid these. But what else would I avoid? Personally, I would avoid buying a machine that doesn't take universal needles. What does this mean? Universal means that the needles all have the same fitting to attach to the machine. So a universal machine is compatible with those. This allows you to choose from many different brands and styles. I like a different brand of needle for lips than I do for brows. A universal machine allows me to swap and change. If you buy a machine that's only compatible with its own brand of needles and you don't like it, then it's a whole new machine for you. Many machines I've bought stop making needles and then you have a very expensive investment that you just can't use. Right, so now we know what fitting is best. Let's talk configurations. This means how many individual needles are in the cartridge you're using and how they're laid out. Were you just taught a 1RL too? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> There are real disadvantages to this needle and if you don't know what else to use, then you're going to end up causing trauma to client's skin. This shows the most common needle configurations you're going to have. We're going to start with the 1RL. You can see there's small, there's bigger and there's even bigger still. These are the sharpest needles because the pressure is concentrated just in one tiny spot. They give us precision and detail but also take longest to pack in colour. Next a 3RL with three needles in the configuration tightly packed together to make a liner. The 3RS, you can see the needles are further spaced apart. Next, a 5RS, which is still in a round formation. There are five needles in this round configuration, so it's gonna pack in color quicker. But the pressure is dispersed over five needles, and so it's blunter. A 5 flat also has five needles, but they're in a straight line. Whereas magnums, like this seven magnums, are two straight lines stacked on top of each other. Magnums pack in color the quickest. So where do we find the info for our needle? Well, it's on the packet. Everything we need to know is there. Let's look at these two needle packages then. There's a lot of information on. 35 1RL LTT, so many letters. But that tells us that each needle in this configuration is 0.35 millimeters. It tells us that there is one needle in this configuration. It is a 1RL, it's a one round liner. This is a liner needle, it's gonna be sharp. Also, the LT means it has a long taper, and the final T is textured. Now that is quite big for a 1RL, 0.35, so it tells us the size of the needle, and also all the other information about it. The next needle says 35 3RS LT. The 0.35 millimeters, again, is the size of the needle, but this is a three round shader. There are three needles, and they are gonna be spaced a little bit further apart, but also in a round configuration. So they're not in a flat line, they're in a, a bunch together, but they're not gonna be tightly packed because it's a shader needle, not a liner. It also has a long taper. So the difference between liners and shaders is in that liners needles are packed tightly together. These create great lines. This configuration is therefore sharper and the color is denser. These are great for lining, hair strokes, and also creating individual dots called pixels. Shaders have the needles more spaced apart. That makes them less sharp so that they can be better for thinner and more sensitive skins. The color does appear less dense due to the gaps and you may need a little more pressure to implant as well. Learning from videos like this is a great step, but something is missing and that's feedback and guidance. And that's where VIPMU comes in. It's my own permanent makeup mentorship program that doesn't make you choose between skills and growing your business. And it also doesn't come with a 10K price tag. Want more info? See the description. 
So why do needles have different tapers and what's the advantage and disadvantage of each? We'll start with the short taper and usually they're not listed on the packet. Where I've placed the arrow is how much is going to be going into the skin so that you can see on the short taper the impression of the needle is going to be larger. This is good for creating bigger dots and also for people that are a little heavy handed or beginners. A medium taper needle will be listed on the packet with an MT. And where I've placed the arrow, you can see that the impression, the dot that is going to be on the skin is going to be smaller. This does come with a little more risk of blowing out because it's sharper. And then the long taper needle and where the arrow is placed, you can see we're going to get a really small dot. Great for fine detailed work. However, not so good for beginners or those who are heavy handed. You have much more chance of blowing out with this needle. Why would we need texture on a needle? Textured needles are symbolized with a final T on the packet. It means that the surface of the needle is textured like the picture on the left rather than smooth like the picture on the right. This means the needle is going to cling onto the pigment. It means you have to dip fewer times. Also, it controls the flow of the pigment off the needle better. I really love a textured needle, especially for precision work. How far out of the cartridge should your needle be? Well, that depends on the stroke length of your machine. The stroke length is the distance the needle travels in and out with each protraction. Stroke lengths can be anything from two millimeter to say four millimeter, although that's quite big for a PMU machine. But your needle hang will have to match it. Get ready for a really high tech demonstration. <laughs> okay, I want you to imagine that my machine is a three millimeter stroke. My hand here is the cartridge and this is the needle that's gonna travel into it. The cartridge is full of pigment that we've sucked up. So if we have the needle out at say four millimeters, each time it goes in and out three millimeters and some of the needle stays on the outside, it doesn't pick up all the pigment. Your needle's gonna be dry and also so is your work. However, if we have our needle out at one millimeter and it travels back the three millimeters, it's gonna pick up too much pigment. This is gonna flood your work. So the rule of thumb is if your work is looking dry, then pull your needle in. If your work is looking all wet and messy and flooded, push your needle out a bit, simple as that. Knowing all your needle configurations then gives you the power to know when to change them if needed. You need to change your needle if things aren't going to plan. This can be if the pigment isn't implanting, if your client is showing signs of trauma, such as excessive lymph fluid and bleeding. In this case, you should be going for something that is a bigger configuration, so more needles, and maybe more spread out like a shader or a magnum. In cases of lots of trauma, it's best to abandon the idea of cute little pixels and just get the pigments in and get out as quickly as possible. When choosing a needle, we need to take all the things that we've previously learned into consideration, but also acknowledge who we are. Are we light-handed or are we heavy-handed? The next thing we need to take into consideration is the client's skin that we're working on. Do they have young, robust skin or are they more mature with thin, fragile skin? Finally, we need to think about the result that we want. So let's think of some examples. I'm doing a lash line tattoo on a more mature client. I'm probably going to want a shader needle that doesn't run the risk of piercing the skin. And I want to pack my color in as quickly as possible. So I'll probably go for a 5RS. If I'm doing a shaded wing, then for the shading, I'm probably going to pick a small 1RL with a long taper to make the pixels really tiny, dusty and airy. If I'm doing ombre brows on a young person and want that really pixelated look, I'm probably gonna choose a 1RL. And if the skin can't take it, I'll move to a 3RL. If I'm doing ombre brows on someone who's more mature and their skin starts to break down, then I'm gonna use something like a 5RS or even a Magnum to get the color in as quickly as possible with as little trauma as possible. If you need more information on which needles to work with on which skins and why, then I made this amazing visual learning video here. If your next step is to learn all the different hand movements and when to use them and see if you're doing it properly, then there's this video. It's choose your own adventure. <laughs> and if you made it this far and if you learn something new, then you should probably subscribe so you don't miss the next educational video. Now, go and practice.